So I'm a PhD candidate at Virginia Tech, and I was awarded a Virginia Sea Grant Fellowship last year in 2014, but I'm just now beginning that work that I propose to do. So as the title suggests, I'm looking at er erosion, or really the way that sediment's moving around, the way that sand's moving around on barrier islands during hurricanes. So we know that hurricanes are destructive, but we don't really know where the sand is coming from or where it's moving to on these barrier islands. And understanding this process can increase our understanding and our predictions of how a barrier island is going to behave or how it's going to erode so that we can protect uh, coastal homes, and that includes those on Virginia's eastern shore. So first, let's look at some damage statistics. Here I'm showing a pie chart of damage caused due to natural disasters from 1980 to 2013. And what we see is that hurricanes, immediately you notice, account for over half of this pie chart. That's huge, right? Hurricanes account for more damage than all other natural disasters combined. And these other natural disasters include droughts, um, heat waves, flooding, not due to hurricanes, etc. So hurricanes cost a lot of money, they're really expensive, and um, the reason that they cost so much is because there's so many processes that contribute to uh, this damage, and this can include flooding or damage from waves, but the process that I'm looking at is called breaching. So here you're looking at two photos. It is of the same location on Assateague Island, Virginia. On the left, you see a pre-Hurricane Sandy aerial photograph, and on the right, you see a post-Hurricane Sandy aerial photograph. The yellow arrow in the, the picture points to the same feature, so you can kind of compare the two images. So Hurricane Sandy, we heard that it caused devastating uh, damages in New York and New Jersey in 2012, but what you didn't hear was how it also caused some damages on Assateague Island. So... Comparing these two images, you immediately see we have a breach. And a breach is just a fancy way of saying that we have a channel or uh, a new inlet that forms across a barrier island during a hurricane. What we also see comparing these two images is that on the left, we have vegetation, this greenery. But on the right, sand is deposited on top of that greenery. And uh, that can cause the island to become more susceptible to future damage. So the, the vegetation effectively holds the island in place. So researchers have studied this question, and we know that significant amounts of, of sand is deposited in this way due to extremely high water levels. You hear that often called storm surge. But what we don't know is why breaches occur where they do. They're highly destructive. They can destroy nearly anything in their path, and they're highly unpredictable. So now I've moved less than one mile away. We're still on Assateague, Virginia, um, Assateague Island, Virginia, but I'm showing two new pictures of a new location, right? Just one mile away. On the left, we have pre-Hurricane Sandy aerial photograph. On the right, we have a post-Hurricane Sandy aerial photograph. And if you notice, on the left, we have vegetation. It was buried by some sediment, but there's no breach. And these two locations are actually very similar. We're still on the same island. We still have the ocean closest to us. We have a barrier island. We have a bay that backs it. But there's no breach. So what I've hypothesized is that it depends on what's going on in the bay. So a lot of researchers look at what's going on in the ocean because it's so active during a hurricane. But what we don't look at so much is the bay side and what's going on with the water levels and the velocities in the bay. So what I plan to study is uh, the movement of this water in the bay and how it determines where which is going to happen and how it's going to form. So the second question I have is why does this breach curve? We see this on Assateague Island and in this location there are no roads, there are no buildings to affect the way that this breach is occurring, but we see that instead of just forming a, a linear path across the island, it kind of curves around. So like I said, this is an undeveloped area. We can also move to a developed area uh, in Manilowki, New Jersey, and this location has a lot of houses, a lot of roads, we also have some trees, but what we see is that instead of this breach in Manilowki following a path of least resistance, it decides to destroy some houses, cut across the road, destroy some more houses before exiting out into the bay. So why does it do that? And again, I've hypothesized that it depends on what's going on in the bay. You have flooding that's overtopping this island, but you also have flooding on the bay side, and these two interact with each other, so I've hypothesized that it's that interaction that causes the breach to form this curvy kind of S shape. 
So now this is, I've shown you two locations in ST Island, Virginia. I've shown you one location in New Jersey. Now we're going to move just a mile south in, in Manilokin in New Jersey. This is another location. This breach is much larger. This is the one you've probably seen on the news a lot. Uh, it occurred near a bridge. And this leads me to my third question. How do these roadways in these buildings affect breach formation? And what I've hypothesized is that it's the buildings being stationary uh, that cause channelization of flow. So imagine you're at the beach, you're in ankle deep water, and you feel the, the water rushing between your feet. You also feel the sediment moving around a lot, right? I'm hypothesizing that the buildings behave exactly the same way. They're not moving, but we have this uh, rush of water that comes between them, just eroding out that sediment. So this is the last question that I, I plan to look at uh, with Virginia Sea Grant. So this is the same location in Manilokin, but this is today's image. And what we see is the bridge has been rebuilt, the roads have been rebuilt, but there are still huge holes in the neighborhood where the houses haven't been rebuilt. And this just illustrates that breaches are highly destructive and the destruction lasts a long time. So what we can do is compare this developed island to Assateague Island, an undeveloped island, to uh, evaluate how a natural island will behave compared to an, an unnatural island. If we go to Assateague Island, this is what it looks like today, or the most recent imagery. And although we don't have any houses that haven't been rebuilt, there were none to begin with, we still see that there's no vegetation and we, it also has very low dune heights. So this makes the island susceptible to future breaching. If a storm were to happen right now, there's a good chance that Assateague Island could breach again. So what this means is um, the results from this work can give us an idea of how breaches occur naturally on Assateague Island uh, compared to being um, affected by these roads and by these buildings. And that will lead us to a better prediction of how our barrier islands are going to behave. And those predictions will help us protect our coastal homes, and uh, including those on Virginia's eastern shore.